So here we are, Katie Novak and Catlin Tucker, and we're here to answer some questions that we received online from some of our colleagues who were wondering about our upcoming book, UDL and Blended Learning. So I'm going to share a little bit from the questions that we received, Catlin, and I'm going to give you this first one, which okay. is, I am in love with the idea of blended learning, <laughs> but I'm the kind of person who needs specifics and examples to help me learn with real life scenarios. So this doesn't work in my head. It says the ideas I have for a teacher led station only make sense if they have done other things first, but someone has to start with me, right? And it says context, I teach seventh grade science. So if, uh, if we're talking about the station rotation model and one of the stations is teacher direct instruction with a small group, what are the other students doing if they haven't received that instruction first? This is a big barrier for a lot of secondary teachers, right? I think a lot of us, myself included, were trained to write an agenda on the board and then kind of march through it with a class. So it was a series of learning activities and we were moving through it, but we're moving through it together. And so when I first started thinking about how to make blended learning and station rotation in particular work in my secondary English class, I had to kind of take that linear agenda and like turn it on its side and pull apart the pieces to figure out, did those individual learning activities, would they work with some modification as stations? And I think often like the, the seventh grade science teacher is thinking about this single lesson in isolation. Like, how is this gonna work if I need to explain this piece here? And my message when I work with teachers is, this piece could be front loaded as a video. It could happen the class before. And then the teacher led station could be about really guiding practice. It could be about facilitating small group conversations about scientific phenomenon topics. It could be a real time feedback session. So I think it's about exploring what are those other things we want and need to do as teachers, feedback, guided practice modeling that we could do in a small group dynamic more effectively than in this whole group scenario. And then maybe we have an online station where kids are exploring um, a media of their choice to learn about a topic, or maybe they're creating like Quizlet cards for a chapter of a science textbook with lots of dense academic vocabulary. And maybe there's like an offline makerspace station that has a science focus, or, you know, they're doing something more traditional like reading or taking notes there. So it, I think it is just that reframing and thinking about our lessons differently instead of that linear path kind of going horizontal with that agenda and like pulling apart the pieces and figuring out would this work as a rotation. And if that teacher led thing I wanted to do doesn't work there, maybe it happens a class before or maybe it comes in a video that students can self pace through. Okay, so I love that. So station rotation doesn't eliminate the possibility of having a shared experience to no. frame upcoming stations. And I think that's what the question is. And it reminds me of another question because when people hear about universal design, they're imagining students making purposeful choices about how they learn and how they share what they know as they work towards goals. But what right. ends up happening is then people go, oh, so that means we can't lecture. That means we can't have a class text. Right. That means we can't have direct instruction. And it's not about the elimination of any practice. It's about looking at that practice and asking, what are the potential barriers there? So mm -hmm. when thinking about a universally designed lecture, for example, direct instruction, what prevents that from being valuable? Well, maybe some students you know, struggle with uh, auditory processing. So I'm gonna make sure I have lots of visuals, that I have somebody who is doing some guided notes on a document camera, that I'm stopping frequently so students can talk to one another. Maybe that is pre-recorded, as you said. So it's not about like, I have to stop doing this thing. It's, I have to stop doing that as the only thing because yes. we know that some learners will face barriers. Right. And station rotation might work great for the objectives of one lesson, but that doesn't mean you have to do that model every single day. I think it's about let's create a tool belt of models. So we're thinking about what are the objectives and what model is the best fit to meet those objectives. That's fabulous. And you can learn more about all the different types of, of blended learning models um, as you dive into UDL and blended learning coming out at the end of May.